So, um, welcome everyone. We are so glad that you're here today. I feel like a political moderator or something. My name is Donna Whitehouse and I'm your moderator for today. We are here for the session Building Better Communication from Committee to College. Uh, and we have our two um, speakers for the day, Amy Bryant. Uh, which you can see she's in my top left hand corner and Jay Chambers and they're going to be talking about how we represent the college uh, to, uh, the committee work to our colleagues uh, so this session will be recording I'll be moder uh, monitoring the chat uh, and I am going to turn it over to our two speakers today let them give, give themselves a little introduction but um, I'll be here in the background so thanks guys thanks Jay thanks Amy thanks Donna appreciate it we are so grateful that you are joining us today because as we dive in we're really wanting us to come in here be a little vulnerable and be able to say let's look at how we work on committees how we communicate on committees what our expectations are of each other as we serve on committees and have a really good conversation about what representation means how we represent each other, how we communicate with each other. As Donna said, this session is being recorded at any point. If you want to ask a question, but you want us to stop the recording, just say, please pause. We'll hit pause and then we will dive back in so that we can have the space where you feel comfortable to share and to talk with us. And so today, Jay and I want to talk about building better communication from committee to college. Please note the keyword there is better. We have communication, but we think that it can probably improve in some ways. So as we start, the first question we want you to think about, do you know who represents you? By Harlan's look alone, I'm going, mm, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> okay, so let's be a little a bit more specific here. On Faculty Senate, do you know who represents you? And our answers are going to be different because we're at different campuses and different divisions. Who represents you on Faculty Senate? Okay, we've got some info in the chat. We don't even know if we're still on committees. That's okay. We know how we feel with that. Robin Lear is representing us for EHCT, so we know one person. Who's our faculty senate chair this year? Scott. Scott McRobbins. Okay, Scott McRobbins. I like how we had Guy Coffin with some question marks. This is fun. Now, here's the thing. We can't all go to Scott constantly because he's one person, and he is not faculty senate. He's faculty senate chair. So let's go a little bit deeper on our questions here. Who represents you on the curriculum committee? You didn't know you were getting a quiz first thing in the morning. <laughs> Wake up, everybody. Who represents us on the curriculum committee? Oh, and guys, I'm on, still on it. I'm sorry? Is Jeff Green still on it? Jeff Green is still the chair of our curriculum committee. So we're doing really good now on our chairs. I like that this morning. Do we know anybody else who might be on the curriculum committee? Rachel Lewis. Yay, there's two yeah. people we can contact. Okay, that one was tough. Let's go to the next one. On the College Leadership Council. Okay. So, okay. and, I, and I'll throw another question out there. I mean, I know we're only on three three committees so far, but I mean, are we are we clear on what these committees do? Thank you, Robin, for the honesty. No, we don't. And Did so we ask we, the committee on committees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, so we have a spot to go. We have a committees on committees, so we can go there and we can figure out what each of these do. And amazingly, they have rosters of who's all on there. But already, as we start out, and you're not alone in this, we're really struggling figuring out who represents us. And so, on the advising committee, who represents us? Who represents you? Because it could be different as we go across. Nobody has to apologize for being late. We want you here. 
Marla Perry, question mark. Marla, we're not signing you up, but we're thinking you might be on the advising committee. So Jay and I started with these questions because all of these groups have faculty representation. But if we don't know who represents us, that could mean that the communication that we're getting isn't happening very well to those committees. And the feedback that we have to give to those committees, we may not even know where to go to give it. Robert, talk to us. I have what may be an embarrassing question. Obviously, you all know some of the answers. Without naming names, are any of these people in the room? I can't see all the people in the room, but I can kind of click through and see real quick. So some are and some aren't. For example, I'm on faculty senate for my division. Yeah, same. Um, I'm for my division, Audrey Cross for EHCT. Yeah, and I can name the people that are probably on some of these committees from my division. But outside of that, I probably wouldn't be able to name very many. And, that, and, that's, okay, and that's okay, because that's the... That's the point and kind of one of the roots of our, our, talk, our talk today is to get our heads around communication and the entities that are available to us as faculty to have communication within the campus. So good, no, not a dumb question, Robert. Great question. I still have that question. And as I throw up the last one on all committees at Nashville State Community College, <laughs> Everybody's like, nope, we already know based on the ones above. We don't know everybody. And so it's hard to be represented well if we don't know who represents us. Now, we can go look at the rosters. That takes effort, but we can do that. And to be represented well, we need to be willing to do that. So you've heard us say a few times representation. Representation, representation. So I want us to spend a minute and I'm gonna stop sharing screen. How do you define representation? When you think about being represented in all of the committees that were listed there, how would you define representation? What does it mean? What does representation mean to you? Robert, go for it. Um, Howard can back me up on this. Jessica can probably do the same. I don't see another. Donna can possibly do the same. Um, Janusz can. Representation on the Senate, at least, has taken two different forms, largely. It's been, I elect Jay. Jay, you go to the meetings, let me know what the heck happens. Um, or, I elect Jay and Jay and I exchange ideas and he expresses my my ideas at the Senate as opposed to me just trusting in Jay. No offense, Jay. Nope, none taken. So representation is you fill my spot and you inform me or and or I give you feedback into issues that are going on and you take my voice forward. How else would we define representation in the room or did Robert just cover all of it and we jump on board his definition? Yes, Yvonne and then Robert. Robin. Yeah, Robin just typed in, it's bi-directional. <laughs> I had trouble reading that. <laughs> um, and I think that's the second part of what Robert was saying, right? That it goes both ways. The, the senator has responsibility to reflect what their constituents are thinking or wanting, but their constituents have to tell them that. And if they're not telling them that, then the senator goes with whatever they think is best, whatever they think represents their, their constituency the best, I guess. And there's a lot of that. And I think people don't understand that you know, your senator may not or may say something or do something you disagree with, and that's okay. You need to tell them that, but you need to get ahead of the game. You can't wait till afterwards and react. You have to be in the decision-making process, and that requires work on our part. Mm 
Well, and I can speak too from, I'll use my division as an example, when things get brought up at Faculty Senate and I solicit feedback from, from my group, um, you know, we're a pretty small division here, so it's it's not as bad as other divisions, but when, when we have to vote on things as senators from our division, it it may reflect the majority of the response because that's what the majority of the people have have elicited for. But but also too, that's why we have in a lot of divisions multiple senators for the size of the division as well. I also want to point out, Rob, and I haven't forgotten you or Howard. When you hear people say senator, also think a little bit broader and think any committee represented. Yeah. And so a lot of times we are using senator, and that's great because our senators are great leaders, but we also want to expand our perception a little bit. So if you hear senator, think committee rep on anything that's there, mm -hmm. Robin and then Howard. I think it um, also uh, that representation involves if I have a concern or if I have an idea, I can go to my, if it's a curriculum idea, I can go to the curriculum committee or my representative on there. They represent my concerns and can answer my questions, but also um, get things done or get something, uh, start, plant a seed to get something done later or solve a problem. I keep thinking I'm just a bell from Schoolhouse Rock in my head. <laughs> you see a problem, <laughs> you tell your representative. Howard. I think uh, that our representatives, this is important. I see four different people on right now that are, are former chairs of the faculty senate. Uh, we have some requirements for that. That is, they have to be tenured and they have to be here a while. So I'd like to expand that concept as to the, all of these committees. What we hopefully are, are electing or selecting for the committees are people not just that are, are in our division, but have some idea of what the heck that committee does or, or what that's all about. I'll be a little critical, and that is my division has two uh, new senators that uh, have only been here a year or two. And uh, for all of you guys that have served on the faculty senate, it sure does help to have had been here for a while. Not that we shouldn't have uh, other people on it because it does help on promotion and all, but uh, uh, there's, there's, there's other committees out there too. Uh, for instance, y'all, don't even know probably that uh, Robert and I, I don't see anybody else in here, Robert, are on the uh, uh, sick leave bank, faculty sick leave bank committee, which is a pretty unique one. And, and that is the experience that Robert's had uh, been on there quite a few years. It helps out as to well, what that, what's that all about? The experience is important. Right? I'm gonna lead off of what Howard just said and shift our spotlight to perspective another moment to that our next question. I'm dropping it in the chat for us. Why do you need representation at Nashville State Community College? Why do you need representation at Nashville State Community College? Amy, I like the comment that just showed up. We can't all do everything. That would be untenable and chaotic. Jennifer says, we can't be everywhere all the time. Marla saying, to share ideas is why we need it. Other thoughts? You can chat. You can raise your hand. You can unmute whatever you prefer. Howard, go ahead. Well, huge why we have committees with faculty on it is the concept of TBR and the state of Tennessee has rules that require faculty participation in decision making. Uh, you knew so I'd never call you on that, but there are certain people that have had to go to the Board of Regents uh, for lack of that happening at National State. So, um, why do we have committees so that faculty's voices will be heard? And so we fulfill the requirements that TBR places on us for our voices to be able to be heard. We are wise together, not so much alone. There's more power in small in groups that come together. We need to be able to be heard. So oh, and that's also that's also part of shared governance. I mean, which which you know we. 
I'm I'm new in the grand scheme of things. I think I'm five or six years full time here now. But I mean, I, I know that for a long time that, that wasn't a, a primary. Um, that wasn't the primary focus on this campus for a long time. Neely and I saw your hand go up and then go down. So I want to make sure you have. To Sorry, I'm still like real person raise hand <laughs> reactions. Um, you know, to meet the needs of our students, we need a variety of voices and faculty obviously have a different perspective than administration and staff. And so to truly be uh, the best place for ourselves and our students, we need lots of voices. Well, and I'll, I'll take it even one step further than what Neely brought up is sometimes, you know, we need different people on different boards or different representation so we can ensure that we're getting correct communication. Because if we have people on um, faculty senate, curriculum committee, um, administrative council, those people are sitting in those minutes and where, you know, not that we have a, where we may not have all the information, we can go to the people in our division that are sitting on those committees and say, hey, can you tell me about this particular topic? And they can give us real information because they were at the table. We can shut down the rumor mill by actually knowing who represents us. So we've done a really good job. So far, we've talked about who represents us. We've looked at what we define representation as and why we need it. But I wanted to give you the definition from Cambridge Dictionary. A person or organization that speaks, acts, or is present officially for someone else. I love the comments, we can't be everywhere and do everything. And so representation allows us to have a faculty member to hold that spot for us and to be present officially for us. And the last part of the definition, people who will speak and act for you in an official situation. And so our representatives represent our division, our campus, but even more specifically, they are our individual voices on these committees and serving Nashville State in our stead as we move. So we want to get your perspectives of what we currently have, because we said building better communication. So we need to start by seeing what our foundation is. And so what I wanna ask you to do, if you can, if you'll scan the QR code and I can drop it in the chat in just a second for those of you who want to just be able to click on it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick little slido so we can see how we are feeling, what we are doing. And I love what Yvonne just stated in the chat. Sometimes we need people who can speak up for us because we may not have tenure and may not feel safe to. And so representation can allow each of us to take up other people's voices to help make those voices be heard. So as you scan this QR code or go to this, the first question that we have for you, some of you are already answering it. I love it when you're ahead. How satisfied are you with the communication you've received from those who represent you on committees? How satisfied are you with the communication that you receive from those who represent you on committees? Our bars are jumping around. We're at 15 currently. We have 25 people, so we wanna make sure everybody has a chance to respond. You didn't get the code, you can still join at slido.com and use passcode NSCC. Based on the responses so far, what does this say? The people in this meeting are not satisfied. Okay, so good. I mean, nobody's very unsatisfied or very satisfied. So we're not at the extremes, right? But we've got a big chunk of people here in the middle who are saying that we're unsatisfied. Well, we've we're got a pretty good getting... percentage that are neutral as well, which you know, mm -hmm. usually on these polls, usually you swing one way or another. So we have a large majority in the some in the middle. We have large unsatisfied and we have a few who are satisfied as we look at this. Okay. So let's go deeper. 
what are your expectations for communication from your representatives on committees? You can type in your answer, multiple words work, just hit enter at the end and they'll appear for us. What are your expectations for communication from your representatives on the committee? What do you expect? And I do like how Jennifer phrased that. We have room for improvement. It's always good to have room for improvement. Consistency and clarity. Woo, look at all of these popping up. Timeliness, accuracy, relevant. A summary of meeting highlights. We want it to be efficient. We want to know about the interaction. I'd be satisfied with just a link to minutes. We're going to give that to you in just a minute so we can move you to the land of satisfied also. To get a copy of the minutes or a response to our questions, okay? What's the to-do list? What decisions were made? What's not done yet, but being worked on? I like people are still typing. It's wonderful that's up in the corner so we know we can get everybody's things in. We want the current information. Ooh, timeliness and accurate just got bigger. It gets bigger when more people write it. So that's why it's going up. We want it to be visible, honest. Concise. Don't tell me word by word what happened in the four hour meeting, please. Direct. Oh, I want to know what the committee member is confused about and not getting answers to. We don't want people to repeat the info with eight or nine different emails. I went up on your numbers. Okay. We have a lot of expectations. Okay. Not to raise your hand, not to say anything bad about any of us. Important info clearly visible in emails just popped up. Have we communicated these expectations to our representatives? Hmm. Okay, sorry, that's a tough one. We're going to go to the next one for us. We have one person typing, so I want to make sure theirs can come up. How do your representatives currently communicate with you and the others that they represent? Your representatives on the committee, we had a hard time coming up with all of their names earlier, but how do they communicate with you and the others they represent? Okay, emails are growing. I like the honesty, unknown. Sparsely. Email continues to grow and grow. Unknown is growing also. In Microsoft Teams chat. Yvonne said, could the voice do an article? If somebody's willing to write it, yes. The voice can do an article with the results of what we're coming up with and talking about. Ooh, some do not communicate. That's why we did this anonymously so that we can be really honest. Sometimes the information is conflicting. We have chats in the hallway. They communicate when they are told to. I like that. Information is vague. Now, I don't know who typed it when they are told to, are they told to by their constituents or told to by the committee or someone? I don't know, you can add and we'll go in there. Another email and another email, okay? They communicate reactively rather than proactively. I love that one. Wow. We're reacting to what's occurring instead of helping to set the agenda. Ooh. Lots of good things. So let's talk. We had a lot of neutrals, about 20% satisfied, and everybody else was in the land of unsatisfied. How can we improve that? Jennifer posted, we have room for improvement. We do. So how can we build better communication with each other about what is occurring in our committees? And I'm going to be really blunt and really honest. So if you're offended, please accept my apology. We complain a lot about not getting communication. When we're represented by faculty, 
and we're not getting the communication, that's on us as faculty for not getting it and not asking for it. Well, and you also have to be in mind if your senators are getting ready for, or, or anybody on a committee is getting ready for a meeting and they send out communication that says, hey, I need your feedback on this. It's very important if you have feedback to, to give it. Um, because if you don't, then you, you really don't have a dog in the hunt as far as your opinions. Or even if you don't have an opinion on it, say thank you for asking for our opinions. I was going to say, I think that's important also. So then uh, they know how much feedback they're actually getting if they're only hearing from the people that have specific feedback. I don't know. With that, I would say, how can we better communicate? I do think there needs to be some type of structure or system set up so that it's more consistent through divisions. Because uh, I think it, what happens is very different. And especially in our large things like Faculty Senate and things uh, like that, we need to have a better system of knowing um, what each person is doing, how they're communicating, how much information is it consistent across divisions? And then again, as Jay said, when we're asked for feedback, if we're only giving it reactively or when we're mad about something, uh, I, again, our senators or representatives don't know if even other people are reading the emails. So uh, there's a lot of technology available now. So I don't know if, you know, Google Forms or something like that, especially on important issues. Uh, would be a suggestion because at least then, you know, we could say like, okay, 60% of faculty responded to this or, you know, if it's only 20%, then we know we need to do something else. But I think it will also help, as Amy said, hold us accountable as faculty for communicating and taking those opportunities to communicate. Thank you, Neely Ann. We have lots of hands up, so keep them coming. Harlan, you'll be first, followed by Gail and then Audrey. Can you hear me? Okay, good. I, my Zoom just went crazy. Uh, I know I was someone who responded neutral because I recognized my own responsibility in not following all of that. And I think that's one of the difficulties is it feels overwhelming. And then I see the email, like, do you want to contribute to the agenda? And I'm like, I don't even know what was on last month's agenda. So I own that. Um, but having said that, like, I think if there was a way to simplify it, um, even you know just a quick video update or something a different format might be helpful from get one more email that i put off if that makes sense uh and i think a video doing something like a video might encourage um a more conversational communication so it doesn't look like robert's rules of orders were written down and this is the what happened and uh maybe also help with that um timeliness and conciseness that people were asking for like I can only make my video three minutes. I've got to do it. Just, just a thought, and so easy for me to give work to other people. But Gail, go ahead. So, like you, Harlan, I was one of those people that responded neutral because I feel like I get spammed on a regular basis. So many emails to try and track and keep up with when to respond to what and deadlines. And I think one of the things we need to keep in mind is that when somebody serves on the committee, that's that's in addition to everything they're already doing. Like I was looking at a lot of what we say we want <laughs> um, from our representative, our, co our committee representative, but at the same time, we need to recognize they, they're doing the same job that we're doing. So there's already a lot on their plate, not to mention the other things that are going on. So if we're going to make it easier for us to find out what's going on in the committee, we also need to make it easier for them to be able to communicate what's going on in that committee. That was it. Thank you, Gail. Audrey. Yeah, so I um, I put unsatisfied, even though I'm one of the representatives that I'm unsatisfied with my level of communication, simply because I feel like there is not a system, um, there isn't a good way to do it. And what I found too, and I've heard this from a lot of people, so this is nothing that's going to be new, but people have said they have PTSD from putting things in emails and from feeling scared of, of putting things in writing. And I have definitely felt that because people 
when I, even when I ask a question via email, people are like, Hey, can I call you? And that's perfectly fine. But giving people a way to make some anonymous contributions to the conversation might be helpful, especially as we transition out of our you know, collective PTSD uh, from putting things in writing. But I think to what Eli said in the chat, people have um, think that things are, we assume that people understand how to communicate and how to create an email to their whole department. We, we think that people just know how to do that or should figure it out. But then when they do things like that, we're like, oh, well, you're not allowed to send that email to these people, um, you know? So there's just a lot of unclear and conflicting, I think, um, expectations. Uh, and that's been a little frustrating as somebody who wants to communicate effectively, wants to sort of figure out the best way to do it. So yeah, I love this discussion around how, how we can better communicate and how we can be better representatives. Thank you, Audrey. Jennifer, your hand was next, followed by Robbins. Sure, I don't even know that I've, if what I'm gonna say is makes sense. I, I've just got an idea here because I'm one of those that answered neutral as well. And the overflow of emails is, you know, we've got these new division representatives and like there's always kind of a joke if you want somebody to read your email in social and behavioral sciences send it to brad and let it come from brad because then everybody will make sure that they actually read the email so with these new division representatives I, it's not really clear to me exactly even what they're what they're doing but it seems like they've got more power and authority and maybe there's a way to loop them in as like the communication liaison for for departments and divisions, again, just just had us, you know, light light bulb moment and wanted to throw that out there if that makes sense to anybody. Thank you, Jennifer. That's what we're trying to do. We're figuring out ways to build better and to look at what we're doing. Robin, go ahead. I'm also concerned because we've got, I've been on committees where they use SharePoint, they use Google or Teams, and and it's almost like um, that stress of having Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and um, and he's not just, just not that into you where he says, she's like, there's so many different ways to be rejected nowadays because of, do you check voicemail? Do you check, you know, what do you check? And that makes me nervous. That must be what motion sickness feels like when I hear the word committee. Would you committee? And I just get sick at my stomach. And, and now I'll just kind of jump in, Robin, real quick. That's That's been one of my concerns or um, coming from a different sector of, of business. We had very, not, not limited, but we were all pretty consistent on um, the platforms and communication methods that we use, you know, and that's one of the things that I've had a, a hard time getting my head around is there are so many different platforms for so many different things. And it's just, it's a lot because I don't know who uses what to communicate certain things. And, and then I've just kind of shut down if I'm honest about it and just won't communicate at all because I don't, if I'm blunt, honest about it, I don't want to take the time to try and figure out who's using what, and it's just not worth my time. That's why we're here in the honesty land of how can we build better, because it's hard to build a foundation if we don't know where people are. Neely Ann, you'll be next, followed by Quincy. <coughs> Neely Ann, you're muted. I'm so sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, one other thought is the idea of, again, as Gail said, these many of these people are doing this in addition to the teaching job. So generally reporting back what happens at curriculum committee or faculty senate, they're meeting notes for that. And so for each person to have to then reinvent the wheel and write an email and figure, that's a lot. So uh, for me, I feel like the focus should be on getting our feedback, getting our suggestions. I feel like that would be a helpful use of time because that's how we get our voices heard. So I, I don't know if, especially with the larger committees, if we can kind of set up a structure as faculty member, just take on the responsibility of reading the meeting notes. Uh, but then that way the people representing us can spend their time getting feedback, getting suggestions and, and focus on that. So that's just the thought. I promise you, Neely Ann did not know where we were going with our next question, but that was a wonderful volley for us to be able to hit. But I want to catch Quincy's. And as Quincy unmutes, it's also important for us to recognize that if a group meets once a month, that means the minutes are always a month behind. 
And so if all we're doing is going in and reading the minutes, they do have value, a lot of value, but you're always a month behind where the conversation is. And so we may need to think about ways to look at our charter, look at our rules for minutes to see if we can approve those faster so that people can be looped in a little bit faster. Quincy. I'm already talking to a lot of colleagues this semester about decisions that are getting made and the amount of times I've had people say, I wasn't copied to that email. I didn't, I don't know about this. This is the first I've heard about it. So I think that the, there is an onus on us as faculty, but also I think administration really has to display this same level of communication. And um, when these decisions are made, there, there needs to be communication um, institution-wide, not just uh, for our faculty committees. Quincy, I agree. We all need to communicate better. And I think to borrow Jennifer's phrase again, and I'm so grateful she put this, there's great room for improvement. Even if your organization, your workplace is stellar at communication, there is always room for improvement in communication. And I think starting with us, how can we improve is a great first step so that we can figure out ways for us to improve. How can we solicit these voices? How can we share information well to start overcoming those and maybe even build the, build the model and be the model for great communication at Nashville State? So how can we solicit voices from our colleagues to help us be better representatives? Now, some of you are trying to check out and say, hey, I'm not on a committee, I don't have to do this. So I want you to flip it and say, how would I wish someone would solicit voices, my voice on these issues moving forward? And the chat is blowing up. I don't know what we're talking about. Ooh, there's no consistency. Neely Ann, your hand is still raised. I don't know if it's from earlier or not. It's gone, Harlan, your turn. Yeah, this is a little bit dipping back into what we talked about before, but I think when I, have served on committees and when I receive information from committees, I don't really have a sense of why. I may, I may, may, I have, may have a surface understanding that curriculum committee is doing this function, but if I were to report back to my colleagues and I don't really know why I'm doing it in a way that would make it efficient for me to explain what happened. And the, the obvious problem is if I just report, here's line by line, the notes, Versus being able to distill that in a way, why do we have curriculum committee? I mean, I'll be honest, I served on it. We never said no. So I really don't have a sense of what we do. And I mean, I've had similar experiences on faculty senate, promotion committees. There just seems to be a general sense that we're here to rubber stamp and then say we did it for our promotion notebooks, but not really a sense of the mission and how these committees connect to the mission of the college. So this is a bit of an abstract answer to this question, but um, if I were on a committee, I would want my, the people I represent to tell me what they need to know in a why sense. I think the why is vitally important. And if we as representatives don't know the why and have a common why, it's gonna be really hard for any committee to get great work done. And I hope that our charge on any committee is not, hey, rubber stamp this, spend some time, do nothing and leave because that's a waste of everybody's time, which is valuable. And Eli posted about frustration. When we're not communicated with, it builds frustration. And we've had examples this week of that frustration. And as a result, we all have that tenseness that's going on right now. And I think it's important to recognize that as we look at that tenseness, as we feel it, it's not comfortable. And when we're blindsided by something, a decision that's been made, a decision that's under discussion, and we haven't heard of it or read our emails or you know, opened the emails that came, we get really frustrated and anxious and we need to be able to have a good response. And one of the things that I heard earlier was, I don't want to have to put my stuff in writing, but I want to still have a voice. And so as we solicit voices from our colleagues, maybe we do need to, in some cases, offer, here's a feedback form that's anonymous. Here's a slide of the poll that's anonymous so that we can get these voices for us to be able to take forward. And whether we're tenured or not, then we can go into those meetings and say, 
I asked for feedback. This is the feedback I received from my division. It's not from Amy, it's not from Harlan, it's not from Quincy, it's not from Audrey. This is the feedback I heard from my division. Howard, I see your hand raised, talk to us. I'm gonna disagree a little bit with Harlan on rubber stamping. Yes, we do a bunch of that. Jessica could certainly tell us, don't you dare. Uh, all sorts of disagreements that came up the faculty senate last year alone. And I've been on many a committee that uh, there has been disagreements and, and both sides. And I think that's why we need to have good representatives uh, to represent us that, that maybe know better what national state's about or the faculty feel. Uh, because I had a lot of good discussions in faculty. So Harlan and I agree that there's a lot of rubber stamping on only, but the rubber stamping, I think, comes because whatever's being presented is probably what we do want to do. I th thank you for calling me out on that, Howard, because I should have clarified that like, faculty senate, definitely not a rubber stamping situation, sometimes too much discussion. <laughs> but uh, definitely other committees I've been on have felt more like rubber stamping. Our next question that just appeared for us is how do we engage actively with those who represent us? I will say as someone who's been a representative on committees here and a representative in my community for elected office, there's been times where I've gone into a meeting and voted many times where I've gone into a meeting and cast a vote that was not what Amy wanted, but it was what the, those who I represented wanted. And by listening to those voices, I was able to go in and put their voices forward and advocate for those voices. It wasn't Amy's choice, but Amy's not just Amy when I'm representing a, on a committee. Amy's representing the division. And if I don't have the active engagement, if we don't have that active engagement, we're putting a lot of trust in the people that are set up to represent us to say, hey, just do what you think is right. And that's a really hard burden to place on anyone. Yvonne, thank you for your hand. Yeah, I think you're right, Amy. And there's also an idea that a lot of us have that I have to represent the majority of what the faculty in my division want. And sometimes we don't hear that minority. And I'm not talking about racial or ethnic minorities. I'm just talking about a minority opinion. And I think it's really important for us to not just focus on the majority, but also give a voice for the minority opinion. And by putting both of those out there, we're able to make a better decision as a whole. Right. But if Come we don't you. have those with no active engagement, it's very hard to know what the majority is, what the minority is, or if a spiral <laughs> of silence is occurring and we're only hearing the people who scream the loudest. Right. And Yvonne, that minority opinion a lot of times has a very different perspective that a lot of that you may not have even considered. Right. Um, something that I think Robin put out in the chat, I just kind of want to mention in doing research for this presentation. Um, one of the things that I, I saw that a couple of other institutions did that's that was kind of interesting is they used um, different platforms forms um, because right now you know with the virtual world being what it is right now a lot of times people aren't on campus together and don't get that you know in the hall time to to chat and communicate like we once did and so they use platforms like Microsoft Teams and they'll set up the committees to have team sites but where everybody has access to it so there can be a discussion board for lack of better terms if if I got a question of hey what's going on at curriculum committee or this you can post it to that site and that discussion board and then that everybody has a chance to chime in so I thought that was kind of an interesting way to solicit feedback and communication within those um, entities. Harlan, Honestly, says we got five minutes left, I think. Okay, Harlan, go ahead. So <clears throat> this this relates to something several points. I was reading a book recently and it made the point that diversity only works if we activate it. 
and the point isn't it's just not it's not enough to just say oh we have representations from you know from this division this division this division this is i think part of running the meeting <clears throat> and maybe it, it's something that hopefully kind of runs downhill like if if it doesn't matter if, if everybody doesn't speak up like robert mentioned in the chat if only one person speaks up that, that's majority by default um I, I think I would personally feel much more engaged in our committee process if I felt like my voice was was heard when I did say something that's not the majority. Uh, so I think oh, I mean, this is a big, big problem. This is organizational communication. This is a huge problem. But this idea of just, oh, we've got diverse people on this hiring committee doesn't guarantee that we are making a decision that reflects diversity. Um, and I think there's been lots of good ideas here. Robin said, like a discussion board with, you know, there's some degree of anonymity and so forth. I promise this was coming for those of you who said, I just want to be able to have an access to the minutes. There, my friend in the chat, you can access all campus committees minutes at the SharePoint site. Now, as a reminder, Minutes are made in one meeting and approved usually in the next meeting. So they do run a little bit behind. But for those of us who started at the beginning, we're like, oh, I'm lost. I don't know. I don't know who represents me. This is a great place to start, to look at the rosters. Now, this point in the semester is hard because as the academic year begins, there's some changes on some of the committees depending on the cycle. And so you may not see a name there because it's in the process of being nominated and selected at this point in time. Howard. Well, just real quick, be aware that some committees are confidential. And that is tenure and, and promotion, you know, what is said in there. So don't expect minutes of, of everything. Well, and those usually have minutes that are submitted that say, they met on this date. Tenure decisions occurred, period. Decisions were passed forward. You're not gonna see the detail because you're not supposed to, but it will show when the meeting occurred and that discussions occurred during those. Maria. I would like to comment about the, um, the new rule about campuses having a meeting once a month and then divisions having them once a month meeting because it was mentioned here about maybe on those division, division meetings, you could relate information that is pertinent to you and that kind of stuff. Um, I heard a lot of people being um, upset, especially from off campus, that the White Bridge campus will not be having those same meetings. But the thing is then that if you are the White Bridge Road campus and they wanna talk to you and share information about what's going on on your campus, when is that going to happen if you don't have a campus meeting? Um, so to me, I don't want to hear if I'm in a division meeting for STEM, I don't want to hear what's going on in the White Bridge Road campus regarding no offense to anybody else, but the building of what's happening in the H building or in the I'm more interested in what's happening in my division because I have a building that I have to be concerned with. We're still recovering from a flood and you know, some of my colleagues didn't even know that I was still, we still recovering from the flood and that's okay, but we are. So, because that's pertinent to us, you know, how we get into our offices, what we have to do. But um, if we're gonna relay communications, all the campuses should have their own meetings about what's going on in their own campus and leave this division meetings just for division matters and not have to duplicate us, everything about our campus. I mean, does that make sense? Maria, I think it's one of those situations of as communication is built, we take steps forward and sometimes the steps are messy and not perfect yet. Can we agree that having meetings is good? Yes, all of us probably think I need more info from my division from my campus. How it's created, how it's rolled out, we're starting with September. And I fully expect that we're going to have some tweaks as we move along. And so one of those tweaks is probably going to follow that type of path. As a person who was assigned to three campuses this fall, my concern was, oh, no, I can't go to three campus meetings at the same time. And yeah. so it's one of those lands of figuring out what can we do that's a step forward, knowing that sometimes our step forwards are into mud and we go, ooh, that was messy. Now let's figure out how to clean this up a little bit better and take some additional steps forward as we go. Well, and I'm gonna go, I'll kind of 
mention too, we talked earlier about reactive versus proactive. And these campus meetings, division meetings, all those meetings are going to give us a great platform to begin to be more um, proactive with topics instead of reactive, because right now we're a greatly, um, we push that reactive button a whole lot. And I think this, these meetings are going to help facilitate us being proactive on a lot of things that we need to be. And I think it would be very proactive, like you say, Jay. And I think uh, when we, I was in faculty center and we had a lot of faculty complain about not knowing what was going on in the H building, I think that will facilitate that if they had their own campus and they were meeting mm -hmm. and they were made aware of what's going on in their own campuses. Correct. Uh, because, and it does feel camaraderie. Com I cannot say that word. I'm sorry. <laughs> Friendship. <laughs> <Come> Friendship. <on>. <laughs> Friendship, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, uh, English second language. So, you know, you some words I just cannot pronounce. But anyway, it does help build that. Because I know um, it helps me when I get together with my colleagues and share experiences that we go through. And this past two and a half years have been difficult because we have not been able to meet and share what we're experiencing through COVID and stuff like that. And I'm just excited just to be back on campus and seeing people, you know, that kind of stuff. But thank you. Robin, you have your hand up. I know that when the teaching center made their calendar so that we could just bring it into our outlook, we should do the same thing with committee meetings. Have a master calendar and pull it in. Then if we wanna go listen in on a public committee, thank you, Robert. If we wanna put it in, if we wanna attend that meeting, we can just zoom in. But we're we every- the solutions that are coming out. And yeah. that's what our goal was today. And I speak for Jay and myself when we say this, we did not come today to say, here is the layout of how to do better communication, not in any way, shape or form. We realized there was a problem like many of you did. And so our goal today was to start the conversation. This isn't the end of the conversation, but already from the chat, from what we've discussed, we see some areas of, okay, maybe we can use this. Maybe we can try this. How can I be a better voice? For those who are representing me to give them feedback, how can we, as people who are being the representatives, communicate out better? And Rob and I appreciate what you said. Hey, I like the professional learning calendar that has all the PD for not just the teaching center, but online learning and all these spots. So it's there for us. That's a win. I didn't know, we didn't know if people would like it. So thank you for that feedback. But we have to be willing to try stuff and also to be willing to have grace when it's messy. Because is it going to happen this year where something's not communicated to us in some way, shape, or form, and we're thrown off guard? Yes. So let's look at it as a way of, okay, how can we make this better and be part of being the solution as we collaborate? I'm going to stop sharing so that I can see all of your beautiful faces and looking at our think tanks and way to be involved. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm going to, if it won't hurt anyone's feelings, stop the recording at this point because I've found that when we do, it even opens up discussion even more so.